<clears throat> and then there is ISO 21434, which has been published in 2021. It was over a couple of years under discussion, and this should essentially build the foundation to um, get really an automotive-specific standard for uh, cybersecurity engineering. So the, the, maybe one of the main difference between the 26262 and 21434 is that uh, 21434 remains mostly abstract regarding implementation, while 26262 has particularly in the appendix and in, in methodology tables some relative concrete hints and also in appendices. So as said before, 26262 is widely adopted, and just due to the fact that 21434 is the newer one, um, it is expected to drive automotive cybersecurity development at scale, but this is at the moment still an ongoing process. Um, the other topic, which is quite essential and which is closely linked with 21434 establishment is the transformation of the EE architecture and particularly uh, deployment of software-defined vehicle methods, which are promoting a standardization here, which is automotive specific. So what does this mean, the transformation of the EE architecture? <clears throat> Some of you might be familiar. For others, I'm happy to explain. So what you see here in the end on the slide is um, a transition from does this work here? Yeah. A transition from a, from a so-called domain architecture to a fully zonal and full car computer architecture. And the difference is basically um, you are starting with a rather ECU-centric and distributed in-vehicle network where you have dedicated domains for infotainment, ADAS, vehicle motion control. So this was formerly before... Um, Electronic vehicles emerged mostly, this was what's classically called powered powertrain, then body applications. So the next intermediate step is essentially to go to a um, central ECU, which is a mixed domain zone architecture, where there is one central ECU which mainly controls, controls the body, uh, body zones. And then the next step, having several central car computers, so which are essentially oriented to help to control and maintain essentially all the domains. One for infotainment, others vehicle motion. And at the end, the um, big goal is to go to a full car computer with these green boxes implementing in the end zonal controller, which, is, which actually resolves um, this idea of having functional compartization in ECUs, but which are just saying, okay, I deploy in the end the um, functions to the locality inside of the vehicle. So going one step further here, we have to understand what are the trends from the zonal transformation which further promote cybersecurity requirements. So first of all, if we are um, collapsing ECUs, MCUs, we are getting a fire, higher functional integration per ECU. The software complexity and value is increasing. Um, more and more emerging are subscription-based models and Zota scenarios where you can nicely update your car even in the field as we know already today. We have higher communication throughput requirements in in-vehicle networking, and then the emergence and transfer of new and existing standards. And what, you, what, what is the consequence of all of these is shown in the right-hand plane of the slides. Yeah? So, and um, one of the most predominant requirements when I'm getting to higher functional integration scenario is that I need strict logical isolation between the formerly separated MCUs or ECUs. Privacy for IP protection is becoming more and more a major asset. So even, let's say, for non-HSM deployed software, we have a widened attack surface. We need high-performance solution for encrypted authentication, which then uh, promotes specific solution, particularly for routing scenarios, encrypting, MACSEC, all that kind of stuff. And again, we have the ISO 21434, and then other um, regulations like the UNECE 155, 156, which are essentially trying to standardize how the risk assessment from a cybersecurity perspective is done on a vehicle level. <clears throat> so coming to a little bit more concrete implementation here. Um, when we are talking about the ZCU, so the so-called zone control unit, there exists essentially two integration scenarios. The one is um, feature-rich cross-domain ZCU, where 
I am integrating both from the endpoint MCUs and from the central car computers, so these parts and that part into the ZZU functions. The other topic is uh, low complexity ZZU, where I'm essentially trying to replace endpoint MCU sensor and actuator function. This is naturally limited by real-time requirements and also partially by integrity requirements because obviously still a separated unit is from an integrity requirement perspective more easy to maintain and to develop. Um, nevertheless, all the scenarios are resulting in that formerly physically separated MCUs are mapped to logical partitions, and we are terming this so-called virtual MCUs, abbreviated VMCU, within a single zone control unit. And then we are looking on two scenarios. We have on the one hand side um, intra-VMCU isolation requirements. So this means I am taking over an existing partition from a former physical MCU and integrating it to, into a ZCU, and I need to separate these. And then I'm having inter-VMCU separation scenarios, and these are mostly motivated by different integrity requirements of the application which I'm trying to integrate into the ZCU. So an easy example would be I'm having an ASLB application and an ASLD application, and I'm integrating this into one controller, and then I would like to avoid that basically um, some of the ASLD requirements are rippling down to the ASLB partition, so I need freedom from interference there. So what I basically need are then isolation mechanisms, and then we have there are two forms. We have in the initiator side and system level isolation mechanisms, so classically MPU and then something else. And we are looking on both in the next section of the talk. <clears throat> so when we are looking on, on legacy exemplary is here are mentioned, so we have isolation at the CPU level. Predominantly MPU in the RISC-V world, this would be more term PMP, EPMP, SPMP, all that kind of flavors. Then we are having um, hypervisor virtualization extensions, which are very well suited to um, integrate several um, MCUs into a single ZCU. And then we are having these vehicles on the one hand side, Trust Zone, and on the other side, WorldGuard. And these are referred here both as isolation mechanics at the CPU level as well as the MCU or SOC level. And this is due to the fact that I need various different components in order to realize the respective functionality, which are allowing, again, to separate different integrity applications from each other. So Trust Zone is predominantly oriented to do this from a security perspective. Um, and we would like to show what we see for WorldGuard and how it can also be used as a freedom from interference solution from a pure safety perspective. <clears throat> so the question is, I'm having now lots of um, isolation mechanisms and what is actually missing here from an automotive perspective? So the first thing, um, which um, I would like to emphasize is if I'm trying to integrate several applications into a, into a single zone controller, I need to form logical islands of functionality which cannot intersect with each other. So in a world guard approach, this would be then mapped to the world IDs. In other approaches, it would be another ID, but um, here the, 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 we choose the world guard as we think it's mostly, mostly suitable for the ZCUs which are particularly oriented in a, or positioned in a real-time domain. And then um, the exercise which we need to do or the question which we need to answer is how many of these IDs do I actually need? And obviously this is correlated with a certain cost function because if I'm getting a very, very large controller with very, very high amount of world IDs, particularly at the, at the slave side, the filtering costs um, definitely silicon area. And then we thought, okay, how can we estimate the number of IDs? There is an, let's say, very application-centric way to do this by just saying, okay, I know the application, I know how many controllers I would actually like to consolidate and which separation requirements they have. Nevertheless, this is bearing some challenge because if we are implementing a so-called safety element out of context, we don't know the particularly, particular application scenario. This is the one thing. The other thing is that um, from an in-vehicle network perspective, the zonal model is not readily consolidated or decided to be only one. 
Yeah? And therefore, um, we have these two approaches. I could, on the one hand side, count the number of independent application partitions. And, or on the other hand side, so I'd say, okay, I would like to estimate an upper bound, and I'm estimating this upper bound by looking in the end on the number of cores or hearts, plus the number of other initiators, so we call this ANMs, so atomic non-CPU master functions. Please imagine something like a DMA channel which can independently operate with a move engine, yeah, something like this. And um, we assume here three, let's say, exemplary configurations, so something which is very small. It implements only two CPUs with two privilege levels and, uh, let's say, moderate number of ANMs. Then we have a medium configuration where you can see we have here one core M and U level implemented, so let's say typically a low performance HSM, something like this, and then three other cores where I would also like to deploy an RTOS to the, to the S mode. And then I'm having a more high-endish zone control unit where you can see there are cores um, which are virtualized. And then um, if we are looking on how basically the scales and we calculate basically the number or the upper bound of separable partitions which I could form according to the privilege level, the number of virtual machines and the ANMs, we are coming up with that number. So for a small configuration, we would need 16 IDs. For a larger configuration, 43 IDs. And for a high configuration, 82 IDs. And this is um, exceeding the... Um, current limit, at least for x length 32 bits of the, of the World Guard specification, where uh, we see a limit for 32 IDs. So, of course, it is interesting to see um, how the scales or what are the essential factors influencing or driving these IDs. And um, most of the stuff I think one can easily guess. So it's in the number of physical cores, it's the number of virtual, it's the number of virtual machines, and for the number of virtual machines, we introduced here some term which we call just virtualization profile. So this is just defining the number of virtual cores and the number of virtual machines which we deploy per core. Yeah? And what, 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 what we see in the automotive market, um, this adoption is currently ongoing. Nevertheless, the number of virtual machines is realistically somewhere bound between, let's say, four and eight per core. And if we are performing this analysis, analysis then we are coming to this chart, which you essentially see here. So we find, I find again the 16, 43, and 82. And we did in the end the exercise to modify on the one hand side the ANMs from the smallest configurations and the need for IDs is going down to six. And what we also did is we increased, let's say, the extent of virtualization going from 82 to 106. So what has been done here was essentially assuming all cores are getting virtualized and um, we are deploying four virtual machines per core. <clears throat> so um, what, one could, what one could essentially say from a realistic perspective and also when you're looking on the cost function, I think we can, we can bind the stuff to something like um, 64 to 96 IDs from a zone controller perspective. Yeah? So the 106 is actually, let's say, borderline from a integration complexity perspective and also with respect to satisfying real-time requirements. So with this one, I hand over to you, Sandro. OK, thank you, Thomas. I think you can hear me. It's working. OK. So uh, no, next one. OK, so uh, the next part is the type of contributions that uh, we did. And we focus mostly in uh, enhancing the SPMP file provisor extension and also the World Guard specification. OK, starting with the SPMP, uh, is the supervisor PMP is currently going towards the ratification, but uh, the point is that the vanilla SPMP just enables a real-time operating system to enforce isolation at the user level tasks. What we have been pushing and advocating is for the need of this SPMP for hypervising, which means uh, to have like MCU-like processors that includes auto virtualization support when you don't have virtual memory or an MMU in place. So. The leadership of the, of the previous SPMP working group has proposed this specification or this model, which basically used the vanilla or the baseline SPMP 
uh, to enforce HS and U, but then adding this dual stage uh, SPMP in control of the, of the gas and the hypervisor to have this uh, virtualization support. The problem is that we believe, and this aligns also with some uh, recommendation from the ARC to the SPMP, is that this will lead to waste in terms of PMP entries because at design time you need to define the number of entries for either the baseline uh, PMP and the other one for the virtualization. So what we are proposing is a unified model, which is this on the right, uh, where you have just one uh, PMP in control of HS mode and you can configure the number of entries to each stage at uh, initialization time and not at design time. The second piece of contribution is with regard to World War. As Thomas has explained, there are two limitations. One is the fully support in, in enhances for virtualization, and the other part is the limitation in terms of the number of world IDs. Uh, for that, uh, we are proposing this tentative naming uh, for these specifications. The one on, 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 on the right side basically uh, enhance these extra level of control or configurability when we have like the virtualization support. And this one on the bottom basically augments the number of configurable world IDs either for 64, if you have these and these, or even for 128 adding the other basically registers. Okay, what we are doing, we are basically not just putting on paper, but also doing some artifacts. Uh, we are already developing these, like extending Kimu with this unified SPMP5 provisor and with the World Guard extension. I mean, Sci5 has released through RISE this World Guard support. Now we are implementing these extensions that we are proposing. At the same time, we are also implementing on an open source Risk Five Core, taking the CVA6 from Poop uh, as a, uh, that now is under control of the Open Hardware Group. Uh, that we already, our team before implement the hypervisor support. Now we already implement this SPMP for hypervisor, and we are implementing the World Guard extensions as well. And also, not only providing the emulator hardware, but also the software based on the Bow Open Source hypervisor. We saw yesterday Andre asking for a reference. Uh, software stack for experimenting with, uh, with automotive. Uh, we are pushing with, uh, with, with Bow that has been around risk five since it, the inception of the virtualization extensions. And the overall idea is to provide a, a platform to, to do a design space exploration as we evolve towards this fully uh, computing platform. Last but not the least, uh, this talk focused mostly on the initiator side. Uh, there are work in progress towards understanding uh, how these World Guard's IDs are going to impact in terms of cost on the slave side. Uh, and we are especially concerned about latencies, cost function, and the configuration uh, models. I will be fast. So one final note, uh, this QR code downloads the paper that we put, made available on Archive. Uh, so we will find a more articulated jargon to explain what we explain here. And uh, yeah, for the most interested, please download and take a look and provide feedback. So thank you very much. I think I just exceeded a little bit the time. Happy to answer all your questions. I'm sure there will be. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you.